So share the screen. Go to images. In the images, go to the axis. Can you see the axis rotating? It's a 3D animated picture, GIF. Um, you can see the volatile process up. And typically, anterior view now, okay, that looks like the what is called as the spaceship. This is the typical cervical vertebra. So you can see the inferior view. And you can see the axis atlas, which is like a ring shaped structure with the transverse foramen, anterior surface, lateral posterior ring. Okay. That is this which I have taken now. Okay. This is the overall cervical spine vertebrae in alignment. You can see the volatile process anteriorly and uh, the canal, spinal canal with the foramen transverse area laterally and how the spinous process length is increasing as we go down to C7. Okay. Radiological anatomy. You can see that sometimes alignment, how the base of skull, margins of the bones, everything can be identified to interpret. This is an anteroposterior view. That is, you are taking uh, the beam is projected from the front and the film is kept behind. Okay. This is the lateral view where the beam is one side and the film is another side. Okay, So you get a perspective anterior and posterior structures in the lateral view. So these structures are marked. You can see the facet joints. You can see the curvature of the spine. Okay. This is another side, the lateral view, but it's the oblique lateral or oblique anteroposterior view. It's between the anteroposterior and the lateral view. You can see the foramen very clearly and articular facets. This is useful for viewing spondylolisthesis, the slipping, okay, pars intraarticularis. There is other type of X-rays which are taken in flexion and also in extension. They are mainly for seeing how much the vertebra is moving in the flexion, how much opening posterior, and in the extension, how much opening anterior. Pardon me. So that is called as the functional radiography or flexion extension radiographs for diagnosing instability of the cervical spine. So we know one level is moving more than the other, okay, when we compare every level. Okay. This is a normal uh, AP and lateral, but you can see that the lordosis is straightened. Right. Atlas and the axis, you can see the transverse ligament in the middle. Right. You can see atlas in the left side and axis in the right side in the top picture and the lower picture shows their articulation. This is what I was meaning that it looks like a spaceship, okay, Atlas. Can you see this picture? Okay, it looks like the spaceship. Um, so this is like, first one is Atlas from left to right, all the three. Second is Axis and the third one is the typical cervical vertebra. So this is Axis, Atlas alone. You can see the ring and the articular pillars and of course the transverse tubercles with the foramen. Spinous process the, not there in the atlas is called as a spinous tubercle. Okay. So the ligaments, apical and alar ligaments, transverse ligament which is posterior to the atlas, posterior uh, to the axis, the odontide process. Okay. Spinal canal is visible. You can see all these structures. This is much more uh, Detailed one, the posterior longitudinal ligament, which I was telling that it is the posterior part of vertebral body. In the atlas, it is called as the pectoral membrane. So that is the pectoral membrane here, okay, which goes cut one posterior longitudinal ligament in the C01 
is called as the tectorial membrane. Right. So this is another uh, section, frontal section or coronal section. You can see the apical and the alar ligaments and the transverse ligament. Um, the tectorial membrane, which continues as the posterior longitudinal ligament. If you cut through the canal, okay, posterior view. And the lower one shows the crossing of the ligaments. Apical is straight vertical, superior. Okay. And then you have the transverse, which is horizontal. So it resembles like a cross. Again, another uh, view of the cervical spine with the ligaments, with the, including the facet joint capsules, tigopophysial joints. In the MRI and also in the X-ray, you can see four lines. The first line is vertebral body anterior margin. A second line is vertebral body posterior margin. Third line is anterior margin of articular uh, pillars. And for fourth line is the margin of spinous process. So you connect all that and you can see if there is any one vertebra which is more um, out of alignment with respect to the other vertebra. There's also another ligament which is the cruciform ligament which was there in the atlas and the axis. So that is like the cross. Okay. So the cruciate ligament has superior uh, part of the cruciate ligament, inferior part of the cruciate ligament, and transverse ligament. Together, they are called as the cruciate ligament. So, not just the knee joint, anterior and posterior cruciate. We have a cruciform ligament here in the neck. So, ligament of flavum, how these structures appear in the MRI. This is again another view of the ligaments. You can see the ligament of nuke, okay, the sheet like triangular structure here. Okay. This is the four lines which I was telling to see for radiographic and MRI alignment in the cervical spine. Vertebral artery through the foramen uh, transverse area and the nerve roots both the sides through the intervertebral foramen and you can see the intervertebral disc schematic picture. Okay. So that's about the cervical spine. You can see with respect to the artery, vein, and the nerve root how it appears. Okay. Can close the screen share. Right. Okay. Because the GAF was there, I went for the direct screen sharing option, not the picture sharing. So I couldn't mark uh, with my uh, the graphic pen. Okay, or the marker. But remember that. Uh, when you are seeing today's situation, the session, you should see with relation to the conditions, how the osteology and the arthrology was related. Okay, so that is more important. And of course, in conjunction with the uh, diagrams on the board, which was done, and also with the uh, ligaments, which are taken for the vertebra or the spine in general, those video, it will complement each other. And you can get a better understanding of this section. The next uh, section of the master class will have the muscles of the cervical spine. So that means that will actually be the more comprehensive one and it's more important for physical therapists. In terms of their actions, their nerve supply, their um, what is called as their dysfunctions, uh, what could be the applied anatomy perspective. Okay. Remember that application of anatomy comes as uh, pathomechanics, it comes in pathologies also. Like we have fracture for the bone, okay, applied anatomy. Uh, the same way, you have a part of the bone that is not developed, uh, vertebral body partially developed. So these kind of situations, it is called as Klippel field syndrome. Klippel, K-L-I-P-P-E-L, field, F-E-I-L, syndrome. Hemi vertebra. So vertebra is half vertebra is formed. So these kind of developmental disorders are also there. And the neck posture, I was telling that it may be side bent and then right rotated to the other side like this. Children also can have this fixed position of the neck, which is called as torticollis. T O R T I. I don't know, it is resembling like a tortoise, but I have not seen a tortoise which is with the rotated neck and all. Okay. So this is. Torticollis, okay. Uh, 
T-O-R-T-I-C-O-L-L-I-S. Okay, torticollis. When we sleep in abnormal posture and next day we wake up like this and we are not able to turn the neck, that is also torticollis. But that is a temporary one. So it is called as Ry neck. W-R-Y. Ry neck. Okay. So various terminologies. There may be many things beyond this uh, also. There are many conditions are there which will be more in clinical conditions, differential diagnosis, and of course, in manual therapy, masterclass are the specialist courses where you actually see the real implication. In the specialist courses also, I have covered the anatomy and the mechanics. But the difference here and there is here, we are going from bottom to up. So that means we have the anatomy as the base and we are going there. There, clinical condition as the base, and then we are going to the anatomy and the mechanics. Okay, so that's the difference. Clinical anatomy, both ways. So it is like a two-way road. Okay, so that is the way which we actually see. And I will open the session now for discussions. Okay. Right. Grish, sir. Ritu, ma'am, and Dr. Darshana. Yes. Yes. Session, sir. Yes. Very, I mean, like, um, what I can say, it was uh, refreshing everything, you know. <laughs> learning about the vertebras individually. Yes. I mean, grossly, we have studied in so many um, sessions before also in all the advanced sessions, what you were saying. But definitely, today's session was very interesting. But of course, uh, CCA course, so we have come to like whatever we've learned advanced, the more basic part, we have forgotten. So it was interesting, of course. Yeah, some <laughs> the wisest. Okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now not audible. Now audible? Yeah, now it's fine. Yeah. I think a very new session. And uh, first of all, I'm going to be more Still cracking? Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was. I don't know. <laughs> right? So, we can understand because we know what you are actually thinking. Okay? So, but it's otherwise, technically, if you see, uh, even when I talk, I am talking like this, you can hear it. If I talk like this, can you hear it? Okay, the speed, because the speed of transmission versus the speed of communication. Right. So, both this, so that might create that uh, interruptions, no problem. Uh, what basically is, every course will be like uh, making you to feel that comprehensively, I am the best. Okay? That's right. Because now I know this, okay, from the inside out and the relationship to conditions. Okay. But in a first year PPT who is learning anatomy, um, if they get the benefit to attend, they will have what is called as half the section, the applied aspects not relevant at the first year. But the videos which they keep watching after the regular classes definitely will make them perfect forever. They don't have to read anatomy at all in the future. Yeah. Uh, automatically, they can handle the practical situation and the viva. Okay. Of course, theory is based upon the diagrams and the depth of labeling, okay, which is to be literally reproduced from the textbooks. Okay? But anatomy is more practical. But cadaver, if it comes in practicals, um, if the institutions are related to the medical college and they have a cadaver and they keep the practical, they keep the cadaver, that means exposure to cadaver is very, very important. Then only it will be justified. But sometimes I have come across these apps, the anatomy apps. So they are trying to give a three-dimensional picture 
one such app i can uh, share and show you so there's one like can help can help is that a website it's also having an app yes okay and no there's one more i forgot the name but these are very fantastic really forgot and, the uh, 3d anatomy or something mm. 3d anatomy i think i don't know i don't remember the name yeah yeah something like these anatomy names only yeah i want you to get to this anatomy okay this is muscle action and anatomy yes so you can have this uh, no these are all videos mm. so this is a free or it's paid no some are paid in between in between the locked one this is like anatomy muscles head and neck it's paid okay oh. so we can put it that upper arm and lower arm is free hmm. you click that delta i click on that uh, i mark it gives the explanation for the delta okay and then it goes to anterior delta middle delta posterior delta where are the attachments with labeling okay a muscle anatomy kinesiology and skeletal so here i can go to uh, touch this zygomatic okay. close this app the next there is also another app in the anatomy uh, 3d bones and organs okay so i'll share the screen 3d bones and organs anatomy 3d okay maybe that is the same which dr darshana was telling okay so here you have a skeletal muscle every layer okay i can zoom in zoom out okay and uh, you can go to the skull okay i can rotate it okay okay so even visceral anatomy okay um it's a very very useful one the anatomy 3d i'll send that play store link in the group so that you can also have uh, access to this so i can click on the structure it will give that diencephalon okay corpus callosum so all these things there are multiple options okay right get back to the zoom for cranial also uh, for cranial bone and cranial osteology also there is a 3d anatomy i will show that uh, which is for the mechanics um that master class in the cranial course okay so these apps are very very useful now technically technologically it's more uh, lively and keeps you engaged uh, especially with online learning or uh, as an entertainment okay for the present generation and plus a clinical tool also sometimes you can uh, augment parallelly immediately take the phone like you can search for an image in google but if you want anatomy only means use the anatomy app and you're going to get directly even when you are offline okay um, that is the advantage of these apps once installed Uh, so there are ads which are too many ads those uh, apps don't work offline uh, online you have to be there so that the ad will come uh, spying from google what all you are searching and then the ads will come uh, but still it's still worth it and it actually extends your learning into different aspects um, because learning with model like this the skeletal models learning with cadaver learning on subject okay that is also possible plus 
diagrams, textbooks, and apps, the digital. Okay. So there are five modes now which are there compared to the traditional learning where only textbook and diagrams were there. Okay. Phones who used to be there, but uh, not in the real 3D mechanics perspective. Okay. Right? Yes. Giri, sir. Yes, sir. Patient ke baat kar rahe ho. No problem. Hey, sir. No, sir. How are you, sir? Uh, what do you think? Hmm? Sir, you, sir. I am. We are all as we are. The only advantage of uh, when we we should be the best of what we are. Okay. It's like uh, I'm able to sit, do the sitting properly. I'm able to teach, do the teaching properly. So something like that. Um, so same like that. So when we are at the best of ourselves, that's the best that you can actually do and get. So feeling fine it's psychological so what we feel fine we don't feel fine we feel confused but we feel disturbed but when it comes to teaching session how are you after the session if you are asking it means that what happened to you after attending the session okay no sir sorry, sir <laughs> how are you at the beginning of the session is like how the person is. After a long are time. You at the, after the session means it is like what happened to you after attending the session okay. or taking the session. Uh, and things are simply as the how are you as we are asking everybody. Okay. Then you remember that you will be fine as long as you don't ask that question. Okay. Because the question makes it to be a formality. Actual feeling of feeling fine, the value gets reduced when you ask this question. Okay? Because when I am looking at you, you are smiling, you are happy, you are in your clinic, and you are sitting bright. Whereas Ritu ma'am, she had a long travel and things yesterday and then today again afternoon also she had travel came back now just now and directly she's attending the class but i cannot see that she's tired she's not tired if somebody will tell you are already tired you take rest with she tell attending the class will make me relaxed okay that is rest for me okay darshana her smile itself seeing everybody will become fine okay so, no need to ask Dashana, how are you? Okay. <laughs> so, it is like that. Right? So, that is how life moves on. That, good morning, good evening. All this, how are you? Or, uh, all these questions. The goodness of the morning is in the experience what we have. The goodness of the person is in the communication what we have with that person okay the communication can be a look it can be a smile it can be words so we should actually transmit it directly rather than verbally asking the best example i will tell people who really love each other will not tell i love you they need not keep on telling that i love you love you love you love you okay the moment they are telling i love you love you love you means fake but this fake only is the foundation of relationships. Okay. So people want that fake thing. <laughs> they, know, they build the relationship. Okay. Same way, formality is for beginning, not for people who are at the later stage of relationship. So asking how are you? For a people whom you know each other very well, you need not ask how are you. Okay. Because either that by seeing them only you can know that they are fine. And seeing you, they are supposed to be fine. Even if they are not fine, they saw you, they should become fine. That is the commitment that you have with the person. Right? right sir. So, students will tell applications, they will write to the principal stating, 
i am not feeling well okay. so that is the feeling it is not like they are unwell okay. they are not feeling well to attend the class they are feeling well to see a movie so that is the fact so <laughs> as you are enjoying everything in life you will be feeling fine for everything that is happening around you that is when you are at a state of trance even when you are talking to people you are communicating also you don't have to sit and meditate um, your state of mind itself will be at that uh, baseline level where you are totally relaxed and comfortable with everything that is happening okay. right so that is the state of fineness we are telling i am fine but actually the meaning of fine is accurate details okay precision finer details fine okay so when you give that details to life whatever that is happening and enjoy each and every details of life you will always be fine okay right all right ma'am any diagram you made Sir, it's old one that I was looking this only, which you were showing oh, okay. in the picture. So the text nature. Just now you gave that orange color, ah? Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, thought that every board you will color orange. <laughs> it is like I am the atlas. That's why it's axis. Yeah, for the typical vertebra. Yeah. And rotation is going on. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking that I should do the orange color to this axis and axis, so I can understand better. That is the way of yes. relating uh, to what is called as our understanding. Because you know that I am wearing the orange. Now uh, Dashna is also wearing orange. So. If you see that pictures orange, 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 photographs will come. Video also orange, 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 and you put the bones also in orange color. No, chromatologically, chromatology study of colors. You are actually relating them to make you better. You are talking about the color code. There is a color code, universal color code for every day of the week. Monday, white. Tuesday, orange. Two, okay. Wednesday, green. Thursday, yellow. Friday, again. Saturday, black. And Sunday is purple, indigo. Those colors. So this is the frame, universal color code. Every day of the week. When I used to be the principal in the colleges where there was no uniform, I used to tell the people that students, all of you wear this color and come on these these days, so that it looks color-wise uniform, not the type of dress. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Very nicely, uh, sir. Everything was, I think, again that cervical spine course was uh, rewinding in our brain again when you were explaining the, the anatomy with the dysfunction also, how the facet joint dysfunction, disc herniation, disc prolapse, and everything. You were just uh, myelopathy, stenosis according to the canal narrowing in extension and flexion position, and the foramen narrowing with the radiculopathy. So I think it was again the revision of that session also was going in the brain that yes, now we can more correlated with the specific part with the their bones, their functioning with the either the facet joint is causing the dysfunction or the transfer process or the spinous process or the canal. So everything was uh, in a correlation with the dysfunction. It is now it is very also easy to understand the dysfunction also after learning this anatomy session also. Because pre although you always uh, covers anatomy session in all the courses before starting the course, you all again you first start with the anatomy. You explain the pathomechanics also. But uh, this is I think it's a very new uh, concept again that we can uh, correlate the dysfunction with the particular part of uh, that region which is causing the dysfunction. 
so it is uh, i think like uh, you were explaining that that c1 c2 to c7 the typical and atypical now we can understand easily that why the their formation is different because of their typical and atypical features because of their shapes so everything why i told her ritma is typical vertebra is because she can get into the mind of each and every person okay whoever is there they are atypical individually one person is super happy or super sad okay she can get into their mind empathy immediately and if somebody is crying she has seen them crying then imagine ritu ma'am she will be like from within she will be crying only so that much that is the uh, what is called as a nature to adapt to every type of person okay every extreme of person to get typical atlas and axis is there in the top vertebrae prominence is there in the bottom still these vertebra are adapting to both okay they are most flexible most adjusting um, and most important okay because they are the maximum segment of every vertebral column okay what ma'am right. yes sir so i think very easy to understand the all the functions dysfunction with their structure also and maybe in the next uh, session when we will learn but the prominence uh, i was expecting dr giri sir to ask a question on like sir i want to ask you a question uh why is cervical rib thoracic outlet syndrome anything happens in cervical vertebra there is a relevant question actually dr girish won't ask that he will usually ask uh, sir lumbar spondylosis may be si hota hai okay so it may be so that is the vertebrae prominence okay so dr girish and if you see cervical rib i actually forgot to tell it's a transverse process of the c7 which actually becomes more longer that is added as the rib another rib extra it is not closing to the sternum in the front it is only in the posterior portion so that is actually it can compress the subclavian artery and it can compress the subclavian mm -hmm. vein or the brachial plexus the nerve network which is coming to the arm uh, from the spinal nerve roots they can be compressed by the cervical rib and because that is actually the initial part of the thorax and the blood vessels are coming out of the thorax so thoracic outlet syndrome okay mm -hmm. type cervical rib syndrome so that is also associated with the cervical vertebra yes ma'am yes sir i think very nicely everything we can uh, go through again this with the notes and the video so it will be for the next session for the muscles arrangement and their function and dysfunction will be more easily we can understand because today we have made the base for the cervical spine so after that making a base we can move with the help of the muscles which muscle where is the compression where is the stretch and after that i can understand that how that we have uh, learned that manual therapies how it will work according to the structure wise that will be more easily maybe in our mind it will be stay forever when uh, we importantly part of that structure function uh, muscles and bones we can understand so very nice sir thank you so much very nice session that is the very routine thing what we do is we just go from anatomy to conditions yeah our conditions to anatomy when we have both clinical anatomy same like the patho mechanics there the patho mechanics of the sarus is also both there So here it is clinical anatomy. This is structural pathomechanics is functional. Okay, so that is the only difference. So here this two directions. You just walk on the road and then you come back also. After that your route will be very clear. You need not see the GPS for the route. Okay. So that is the thing of the clinical competency or the uh, a sense of solidarity. Okay, in clinical knowledge. Well, that will come right sir over a period of time you need not read anatomy text and you don't have to do anything okay? you will just remember right sir 
because when we move somewhere then the distance is same either we are going or coming back but uh, when we are going we feel that it's a very far away but we are now we are coming back again so it uh, looks like or uh, it's very easy that uh, the distance is very less so this, this is the same which we are learning um, now we are learning and if for example you like the place where you are going okay yeah. like your mother's place or brother's place the distance is very short when you go and the distance is very far when you are coming back okay so <laughs> Yes. Yes, sir. yes. So sir. same like a clinician, a perfect clinician will actually think about pathomechanics being more important. A perfect anatomy anatomician, anatomy based clinician will think about clinical anatomy being more important. Right. Right, sir. Thank you for a wonderful session. Again, the all the cervical spine is. Going in a dry neck to torticollis to cervical radiculopathy, disc prolapse, disc herniation with the nucleus pulposus. Everything you have revised in a single session. That because in the muscles, the neck means only myofascial pain syndromes. Yeah, right. And muscular dry neck. Okay, that's all will come. The applied aspects. Muscle dysfunctions type of dysfunctions will come just as a overview. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. yes Dr. Dashna, you ready to close the session? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Much. With your closing comments. My closing comments. I don't know. Somehow I'm enjoying these anatomy sessions. Yeah, <laughs> me too. As you rightly mentioned, you know, I'm like more for pathomechanics. Okay. I really like pathomechanics. So for me, uh, from pathomechanics coming down to anatomy is like very, very interesting. You know, it gives Basically, me... Basically, you both are like... Okay, you will feel like the first year PPT. Okay? Yeah. The version 2.0. Okay? The first year PPT and you got the opportunity where Sethil sir is there teaching you anatomy. Okay? So, where your foundation you are seeing Sethil sir there. Okay? Although videos were there and the classes, all these things were there, you were watching it in a number of times. This is like... Taking you through, okay? like each and every place. Okay, so that way, definitely you will enjoy this course maximum. Yeah. Me too. Okay. This is very. I was actually planning for T-shirt with the uh, uh, that uh, either that skull which is disarticulated. Okay? I am a cranial osteomanual therapist. Okay, like that one T-shirt design. Discussing with that person, and also same like visceral somatic manual therapist. So here visceral picture, lung, heart, liver, intestine, everything in the dish. Okay. So, I don't have a color code, but I was thinking of these designs Sounds so nice. that and we wear all of us wear that visceral T-shirts and we sit for the closing ceremony or even inauguration, for example. Anything is possible. Osteomanual therapy, maybe for the closing ceremony, where uh, skull, this articulated skull is there in the t-shirts. Okay. Or something like that. Right? New Year yes. gift. Just enjoy. Mm. Especially for people who have completed the fellowships and, of course, uh, the core committee. Right, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, right. So we can close the session, Krishna. Yes. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Ratu ma'am. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I was telling that Radha is back in Vrindavan. <laughs> because <laughs> she came back in. <laughs> yes, sir. Her. Perfectly said. We are back in our, again, in our daily life routine. Yeah, the whole three, four days will be now like a dream. Okay. Yeah. It will be like yeah. it will vanish. Enjoyed. Fully enjoyed the time with all the dear ones and the cousins. All we met after a long time we were together. So we spent a quality time we spent and we enjoyed. 
I personally I enjoyed others I don't know if they have enjoyed or not but I enjoyed <laughs> with my cousins we so that is important more important is like when you enjoy definitely everyone around you will enjoy okay Uh, if you don't mean so seeing you others will become sad okay so and either they will run away from you okay especially in family functions if they see somebody sad means nobody will go there only gossiping people will go there to get the information so that they can go and tell others hmm? so anyway it is good to have a gathering okay i feel for me gatherings are conference gatherings so these are more important i see other people is yours like that when my relative gives me invitation card uh, for uh, my uncle actually my cousin sister is getting wait married he wanted to give me an invitation i said that two years i have not gone out of bangalore just to see my mom also so i am not going to go for any family function i went only for the workshops for which i got vaccinated otherwise for myself i didn't get to vaccinated also so uh, this is the practical fact and i am not going to come for the wedding directly i told he did send me the invitation in whatsapp also okay so because people are not used to such an abrupt truth okay when we speak that they might feel we are very arrogant um, we are hurting them they might think but fact is fact the girl side he has to make lot of arrangements why he has to count me in a number and make that uh, things and after that i tell last moment that i tried to come but i couldn't come polishing words this and all i don't want to actually feel that it is part of my nature okay so <laughs> that is the thing right so enjoy stay smiling good luck yes sir thank you sir thank you tomorrow you. for the muscles of the neck okay anatomy and then we go right sir right so take time to actually refresh on your cranial um, yes sir so that it will help you more that is another reason why i am giving this pause as the yeah. anatomy course it will warm you up with the fundamentals the cranial course will become physical mechanics for the direction right sir yes sir right yes sir bye sir bye ma'am bye, bye. good night bye, bye. bye.